your brother Larry Adenekon welcoming you to the really really knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God all powered by the pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Inspiration the PLACE <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on areas often targeted by Satan, coming from Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 3. Let us pray. Thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father. You are good, your mercies and dear forever, God, and we so testify here. Take all the praise, take all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll spend a few minutes with your people, O God, and we are asking that you help us to make the best of these 10 minutes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew, we said... Uh, no, not Acts. Matthew 4, yeah. Matthew 4, 1 through three now jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward he was hungry now when the tempter came to him he said if you are the son of god command that uh, these stones be made bread okay we can stop there we have a lot to learn in those um, uh, few uh, words praise the lord so the Bible says that he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. For the serious student of the Bible, the moment he, he, he says the word tempted or has the word tempted, eyebrows should be raised because the Bible says in the book of James that God does not tempt anybody. So when he says that he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, hey, we need to reconcile stuff here. Yeah, that's what I expect from people who are uh, very sharp-witted in the course of their study of the Bible. The moment you see something, yeah, raise your eyebrows and say, yeah, God got things to explain here. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because that's the way I am with the Lord, and the Lord manages to get me to understand a lot of stuff. Hallelujah. Okay, so this whole thing, led to the winner to be tempted of the devil, um, actually can be better explained in our day and time in a way that our people will understand a lot, lot better than the language that was coined here. But I believe that the people of this particular time, they understood it as well. And so um, it looks like conflicting to us at this point in time, but it probably most likely wasn't to them. But let us go on to explain the way it is so that uh, we'll get an idea of what the Lord was trying to pass across here. Hallelujah. Thank God for the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Now, whenever <clears throat> you will notice that when people are going into some very difficult and um, irregular or unusual kind of terrain, there's a preparation for that. Take, for example, when people are going to the moon, they will do what they call simulation for months or weeks. Okay, They will try to put them in a room or in a house where things are going to be the way they are on the moon and begin to make them prepare for that time or where or how things are going to be while they are inside the rockets taking them to that you know and they will get themselves accustomed to that kind of uh, um, let's say zero gravity environment or whatever or when people are going to uh, deep ocean that like people want to go to the um, um, things at the, at the rock at bottom 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 of the sea for example they get prepared they will, they, will, they will simulate things. They will put them in places where the pressure will be similar and the kind of thing that will happen. Or when people want to go on some expedition, let's say to the poles, the North Pole, the, the, the South Pole, for example, they will take them to some very icy place, not here the North Pole, and then take them through you know, some training and let them know the way it is before they set on their journey so that as they set on the journey, uh, they, they will be ready for that. Now, that was the kind of thing God did you know, in, I mean, uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ here. He took him to a place where he would have a simulation and a preparation and adaptation in readiness for the ministry who was about to go out there to execute. Praise the Lord. So that was it. So this spirit drove him or uh, took him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. What he's trying to say is that um, the spirit of God took him into a situation where he will go through all those things so that by the time he now came out, 
Amen. Some of the things he was going to experience, he would have experienced, you know, a lot of it even there, so that these other ones are going to be rendered very, very small relatively, you know, to what he has experienced inside over there. Praise the Lord. Well, as we go on, you are going to see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So it's not um, deliberately to make him uh, sin or anything like that. It's to prepare him. We are going to see it as we go on. In verse 2, it says, And when he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. The question that comes to mind, does that mean that he was never hungry all the 40 days and 40 nights? Yeah, that's the next question now. Now, that leads me to another thing. You see, the way God has designed the human body, after a while, when you begin with the fast, there will be a lot of complaint from the body in terms of hunger. But the body has a way of adjusting itself, you know, so that the, the minimal thing you, you, you give it, he manages to survive on that minimal thing and he will live without being hungry because it has adjusted accordingly okay and you know like there are people today who eat only one meal in a day even that one meal is just fruits and a couple of other things once in a day i don't want to mention names here okay <clears throat> Then, and they have existed, and in food, they actually even live longer than a lot of the people who are eating three square meals. Yeah, that's just, the body will adjust accordingly, all right? But there's something, the moment you declare that the fast is over, cravings will start, instantly, cravings will start. <laughs> that's just the way it is. The people who have, who have been involved in uh, long-term fasting, or even just one week of fasting, you will see, you manage to cope with things, you don't even feel anything. The moment you say, thank God, it's all over, that's when you begin to feel like eating everything you have not eaten for one week. You just be, the craving will just start. That's just the way the body is. Praise God. Now let us go back to what I said. I will come back to in verse one. When the Bible says that Jesus fasted for uh, forty days and forty nights to so be tempted by the devil and all those languages, I said he was being prepared for what was coming. He wasn't only fasting of food; he was fasting one of food truly. That's the only one that everybody talks about. But it wasn't only food. Number two, he was fasting himself of comfort. He didn't have comfort. Sleeping on, on you know, on, on a sand and using a rock as your pillow isn't quite comfortable. <clears throat> it doesn't actually give you the best of sleeps. So he was fasting himself, number one, of food. He was fasting himself of comfort, okay, and good sleep. And number three, he was fasting himself of human socialization. Because in the wilderness there, it was just himself and a couple of butterflies and, and, um, and praying mantis and, you know, some squirrels that will run here and there or, or mere kids or whatever. That kind of a thing. Those are the things he will be seeing and all that. <clears throat> so he was fasting also of human socialization. So his fast was not only about food. He was missing human beings. He was missing comfort and all those things. Praise God. So he went through all that at that point in time because he was being prepared for what was coming. Now, somebody who has missed human beings for 40 days and 40 nights, who has missed comfort for 40 days and 40 nights, who has missed good food for 40 days and 40 nights, the one of four days will be little or nothing to him. The one of one week will be little or nothing to him. And so he will preach and go on and go on. Can you, we're going to, this is book of Matthew. We're going to soon get to chapter 5. And when you go from chapter 5 of Matthew, you see the whole Bible is in red. Red, red, words of Jesus in red, right up to the end of chapter, chapter uh, 7. Everything in red. Jesus was the one talking. Praise God. For days. So he will be on. Because he was now accustomed. He had been prepared for it. He had gone through the simulation. He had gone through the acclimatization. He has gone through the adaptation. And so when the thing begins to happen, he was able to run it. Hallelujah. Without any problem. So he had been fasting that way. And afterward, he became hungered. All those things he had managed to cope with. But the moment you declare that the fast is over, the cravings will start. That's it. That's why the hunger came up. And it was not, it was, this one was focused more on hunger. But it was not only hunger. He will also crave for human fellowship. He will also crave for, uh, for comfort and all. They will just come. That's the way it normally runs. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, those are the next things. And, and then the tempter now came and said to him, If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread now what happens when the tempter comes and this is the punchline when the tempter comes he will tempt you on the basis of the present pressure praise god <clears throat> he's not likely to tempt you on the pressure of last year 
It's not likely to tempt you on the pressure you have never, or something you have never experienced before. It's on the present pressure. At this point in time, afterward, he was hungry. That was the present pressure. And so when Satan came, the first thing that he said to, he said to him was, turn this whole thing into bread. I've omitted something I should have mentioned to us. Does this thing mean that Jesus wasn't tempted at all until um, uh, at the end of the whole exercise? Nope. All those things I said that he, he was missing, they were all objects of things that Satan would, you know, try to taunt him or to offer him or to make him, you know, uh, you know, want to go this way or go that way about and all that. Yeah, all of those things I mentioned, yeah, they were objects of, of those things. So let's come to this one. Now, he would typically tempt you in the area of the present pressure. That is it. And so we are saying that the, the areas that Satan are of, often most likely tempt you are the area of present pressure. Present pressure could be anything. For some people, the pressure, present pressure would be hungry, hung, I mean hunger, like it was with Jesus. For some people, it would be money. And so if it's the present pressure, most likely that is the area Satan is likely to, to put uh, some effort. And some people for them, some people, it's office. They want to be in certain office. They really want to be in that office. They, you know, and that is where Satan is going to put the pressure. For some people, it's sex. <clears throat> if that is the present pressure, that is where Satan is going to try to attack. At times, human honor. You just want to be honored by human beings. You want to bear the titles. And people to say, oh, look at him. Oh, you're welcome, sir. You know, and this and that. And that is what... That is what is going on and that is Satan will see that and then begin to mount pressure in that particular area. At times it's just a matter of pleasure and fun. Yeah, that pleasure too. Yeah, Satan can tempt you in that area because it is the present ple pre pleasure. Now you will notice something about these different areas I've mentioned. They are one aspect or the other of the three main things in the Bible. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. If you look at those things that we have enumerated, they, they, they are covered in one of those areas. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. But it's the one that is presently pressuring you. That is the one Satan is likely to put his hand, you know, into. <clears throat> if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because the man was hungry. So he began to talk about commanding him to bread. Okay, we are probably going to round off here because of our time. But then we are going to see again. What is the connection with, between the Son of God and commanding things into bread? We have not, we have not, we don't have enough time for that today, but we'll, we'll get back, we'll get there by and by. I believe that we have learned something from this today, and I want to encourage us to please share with the others so that by the grace of God, more people will benefit from this ministry. Thank you very much for being there. Really appreciate you. Thank you.